Joining us now is my MSNBC political colleague, Pat Buchanan. Pat, it is, it's been far too long since you've been on the show. It's really right. nice to see you. Good to see you, Rachel. So your argument is that Republicans could reap political rewards by mm -hmm. making the argument that Sotomayor essentially doesn't deserve to be on the Supreme Court, that she's only there because of her race. Is that, is that did I understand your argument correctly? Well, I think I would vote no on Sonia Sotomayor the same way I would have voted no on Harriet Myers, and I said so the first day she was nominated. I don't think uh, Judge Sotomayor is qualified for the United States Supreme Court. She has not shown any great intellect here or any great depth of knowledge of the Constitution. She's never written anything that I've read in terms of a law review article or a major book or something like that on the law. And I do believe she's an affirmative action appointment by the President in the United States. He eliminated everyone but four women, and then he picked the Hispanic. So I think this is an affirmative action appointment, and I would vote no. And what do you, what do you think that affirmative action is for? Affirmative action is to increase diversity by discriminating against white males. As Alan Backe was discriminated at the University of California at Davis. As Brian Weber, that worker in Louisiana, was discriminated against. As Frank Rickey and those, and those firefighters were discriminated against. As Jennifer Gratz was discriminated against and kept out of the University of Michigan, which she set her heart on, even though her grades were far higher than people who were allowed in there. That's the type. Affirmative action is basically reverse discrimination against white males, and it's as wrong as discrimination against black females and Hispanics and others, and that's why I oppose it. Can, I, I, I obviously, I have a different view about it, but I wanted to give you a chance to explain what you But why do you have it. a different view? Well, why let me, is it let okay me, to discriminate just, against white males? Let me ask, let me ask you this. Sure. Why do you think it is that of the 110 Supreme Court justices we've had in this country, 108 of them have been white? Well, I think white men were 100% of the people that wrote the Constitution, 100% of the people that signed the Declaration of Independence, 100% of the people who died at Gettysburg and Vicksburg, probably close to 100% of the people who died at Normandy. This has been a country built basically by white folks in this country who were 90% of the entire nation in 1960 when I was growing up, Rachel, and the other 10% were African Americans who had been discriminated against. That's why. So, but does that mean that you think that there are 108 of 110 white Supreme Court justices because white people essentially deserve to have 99.5 percent of those positions that there's My, nothing that doesn't reflect any sort of barrier to those positions by people who aren't white you think that's what they you think that's just purely on the basis of what white people have deserved to get I think a lot of people got up there for a lot of reasons, but my r argument would be get the finest mind you can get. Get the real scholars, whether you agree with Bork or Scalia or not. They're, they're tremendous minds, and I think uh, there are other minds. I'm sure the Democratic Party, I'm sure, has women there that can stand up head-to-head -head with Scalia and make the case who have got tremendous credentials, knowledge, background, but they, this one doesn't have that. She was appointed because she's a Latina and an Hispanic and a woman. She's I mean, also, look at, she is also the judicial n nominee who has more judging experience than any judge who's gone up, say, in the past, I don't know, what is it, 70 years? She has she been an appellate court judge um, of some distinction for a lot longer than Judge Roberts was, Judge Alito um, was. I mean, it, it, sure. It's not like she was, she was picked off the, she was like picked out of the minor leagues and brought up here, Pat. Listen, it certainly is. Look at her own words in the New York Times from the tapes. It's in the New York Times, June 11. She said, I'm an affirmative action baby. Yes. I got into Princeton on affirmative action. I got into Yale. I didn't have these scores that these other kids did. How did she get on Yale Law Review? Affirmative action. How did she get on the federal bench by Moynihan? Moynihan needs an Hispanic woman, just like Barack Obama needs an Hispanic woman. That is not the criteria we ought to use, Rachel. But Pat, for Supreme Court justices, conservative or liberal. That's why I opposed Harriet Meyer. I said, I know she's going to vote with me. She's a good Christian woman. She's probably a fine lawyer, but she's not Supreme Court material, and neither is Sonia Sotomayor, and I think, I think you know 
know that, Rachel. I don't How know that at know? all. And I would say that if you and I agree that what our country needs is to be able to choose from the largest possible pool of talent in order to be able to pick the people who are going to have to function at the highest level so that our country can compete and that our con country can do all the hard things we need to do, I would hope that you would see that picking 108 out of 110 white justices Rachel. of the Supreme Court means that other people aren't actually being appropriately considered. And the reason well, they have affirmative action right. is that you recognize that the fact that people were discriminated against for hundreds of years in this country means that you've sort of gamed the system unless you yes. give other people no, a leg does, up. You've gamed does the not. system it by putting not. them in the best schools well, and let the me best give you jobs. An example. And, hold on, I would let you talk for she a long time. She was put let into the best schools. She was put That's into right. the best schools. That's right, she was. Affirmative and action, it, not it, because of ability, Rachel. She was put there, she said herself, because of where she came from. She's an Hispanic woman, she's from Puerto Rico. That's why she was passed over. Other students who applied there with better scores, who were denied the right to go you, to Princeton. Do you think that she got the grades that she got at Princeton on the basis of affirmative action too? I think what they do in the Ivy League, and you know it as well as I do, about half the class graduates cum laude these How'd days. How'd you do at Georgetown yes, compared do. to how she did at Princeton? I'll tell you, I graduated higher in my high school, I will bet, or as high as she did, and I'll certainly say in, in Georgetown I did, and I'll tell you, I would, I would match my test scores against her, but I'm not qualified for the United States Supreme Court. But Pat, for, you to, argue that it's th that for you to argue that there's no basis on which the United States benefits right. from having Hispanics be among the people who we choose the best and brightest from, I defies belief. The idea that I, you think I, we're look, best I served wanna, by only right, choosing hold it, hold from it. among 99.5% no, 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 no. white people Hold for it. these jobs, I don't believe you believe it, Pat. I ho hold on. I believe everybody should get a chance to to excel and be on the United States Supreme Court. But if I look at the U.S. track team in the Olympics and they're all black folks, I don't automatically assume it's discrimination. I will say, I think maybe those are the fastest guys we got. That maybe they're the fastest guys in the country. Maybe they're the fastest in the world. If they're all our Olympic team in hockey is eight white guys from Minnesota, I don't assume discrimination. Why do you assume discrimination simply because you got one component on the Supreme Court? Where is the genius you think, who's a woman and a feminist, who should or ought to be on that Supreme Court? Go for her. Don't go for an affirmative action person you know was picked because she's a Latina and because she's a woman. Pat, when I look at the United States Supreme Court and I see 108 out of 110 white people, I see 108 out of 110 men. I'm, I don't look at that and think, God, white guys are naturally better at this type of work than the other people who aren't getting these jobs. What I don't do think you that say? way. It's and I want, and I want to hear you, ex I, wanna, I would love to hear your answer as to whether or not you think that is what explains it too. Because I think what the more obvious right. explanation is, is that you have to be a white guy in order to get considered for these jobs and has been true since the dawn of time in this country. No. That's starting to break up now so that we can tap a bigger pool of talent. You should be happy about that for your country. Pat. I do. I do. I'm happy when you got all 78 firemen can take a test, but if all the guys that win in the test are all white guys and one is a Hispanic, I don't say automatically the test was fixed, biased, bigoted against black people, because I don't know that, Rachel. And those guys did well in that test, and they are victims of this evil affirmative action policy, which says, in effect, that everybody's covered by the 14th Amendment and the civil rights laws, unless you're a white male and your parents and ancestors came from Europe, then we can discriminate against you. That's what I am against. Pat, do you, do you, are you happy that we've got a Latino on the Supreme Court for the first time or we're about to? Does that seem like a positive thing I for the would, country? I think the Republicans had an outstanding Latino who had outstanding grades and was brilliant and was gutted. Miguel Estrada. I was all wait, for him Pat, for the appellate you, wait, court. Let me just ask you the question before going to talk about some other Latino who's not a question here. Are you happy for the United States of America, for our prospects as a nation, that will be the best that we can be, that there is a Latino on the Supreme Court for the first time ever, that that glass ceiling is broken? Do you see it as a positive thing? If you say, be the best we can be, we're not being the best we can be with Sonia Sotomayor, and I think you know it. Pat, I couldn't disagree with you more. I, uh, I, attribu I, I, I credit you to sticking to your guns. I think you're absolutely wrong about this, and I think that by advocating no. that the Republican Party try to stir up racial animus among uh, white voters here, you're I really say, dating yourself. You're dating I yourself. I say, you know, I, you know, I think they ought to do they ought to defend the legitimate rights of white working class folks who are the victims of discrimination, 
because that's the right thing to do and because it's the politically right thing to do. It so happens that here that doing the right thing is the right political thing. Standing up for Frank Rickey, we saw the face of the face of a victim of these policies. Rachel, you and your friends admire up there in, in New York, and you never look at these guys who are working class guys with their own dreams. Pat, Just like Sonia Sy I don't Sotomayor need a lecture from you hers. about whether or not I know what working class Americans do. Pat, I you really don't need a lecture do, from you about what, what, what I think it. about working class Americans or what anybody you, else you, in New York, including Sonia Sotomayor, who grew up in the Bronx, thinks about working what do class you think? Americans. We're, a lot of things divide us, Pat. Race is one of those things, but there's a lot of other ways in which do we stratify think? as a country. And for you to privilege race and say that do what we really need to make sure we make to, we, 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 we we tap politically is white people's racial grievances, you're playing I, with fire and you're dating I, yourself. You're living uh, me, in the 1950s, dating, Pat. I, and I know maybe I'm dating, we're, I'm dating the 1960s when the Civil Rights Act was passed. Do you think Frank Ritchie and those guys were treated justly when they were denied that promotion because they were white? Pat Buchanan, MSNBC political analyst. I'm very sorry that we're out of time. It's nice to have you back on the show, Pat. Thanks. Uh, I've enjoyed it, and as I always do, Rachel. We will be right back.